sound barrier with my mind. <laughs> Yeah, they laughed too. <laughs> and because they were laughing at my unconventional appearance, cool hair, cool beard, my policies, philosophies and opinions were completely ignored. And those of you that are listening will know that's exactly what happened to Che Guevara, who I'm telling you now that I am a little bit like. Che Guevara, who at this point in history has been so successfully extricated from his true meaning that he can be used at a car exhibition to promote a new version of the Mercedes. Look, they've replaced the star on his beret with the Mercedes logo. He wouldn't have minded that. He liked big companies. <laughs> I will say, people of Stockholm, the Mercedes is another one of the companies that made things for the Nazis. Now, I have to be careful because I got in a lot of trouble for saying the same thing about Hugo Boss. But what I want to know is... <laughs> Why do I get in more trouble for pointing out that people made things for the Nazis than the people who made things for the Nazis? That's not fair. Excuse me, I think they might have made things for the Nazis. Shut up! How dare you! What if a Nazi were to overhear that? Yes, I am a Nazi and I was very offended by what you just said. We are sensitive people. Che Guevara is not alone among my heroes in being posthumously appropriated for corporate usage. Here is an image of Gandhi being used to sell Apple computers. Be the change you wish to see in the world. I can't imagine that the change that Gandhi would wish to see in the world would be iPhones getting thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner until you don't know whether to make a phone call on it or spread cheese on it and fucking eat it. I can't imagine that Gandhi would approve of the iPhone factory in China where conditions were so bad that the workers were jumping out of the windows at the top of the building and killing themselves rather than work there and the management of the factory solved that problem by putting nets up around the building. I'd love to have been at that meeting. Boss, it's happened again! Oh no, that's the fourth suicide this week. What are we going to do? I'm so glad you asked. How about we pay the workers more money? A pension plan. Bring your daughter to work day. Whoa, 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 you're really overcomplicating this. Put some fucking nets up. <laughs> also, what do you say to somebody... What do you say to someone who's made a decision to end their life by jumping out of a window when you get them down out of the net? <laughs> Oi! You! Down out of the net, back to work. <laughs> that counts as your tea break. <laughs> Stop crying, that's like a big trampoline, that. <laughs> and make them thinner. It's not my department. <sighs> I can't imagine that would be the change that Gandhi would wish to see in the world, unless maybe him and his wife worked at that factory. What, so we're gonna jump out the window, are we, Gandhi? Yeah, that's right, you first, love. <laughs> What, and then you're going to jump? Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about the details later. In hell! <laughs> no joking, Gandhi is obviously a lovely man. I'm just being silly for fun. In fact, <laughs> making the point, how come these great men, these true heroes who prepared to die for the rights of us the people, are now being put into this new corporate context? Why are we told a story culturally that gives us no nutrition, that gives us no value, that separates us from one another, that makes us suspicious and afraid of one another, that focuses on the differences we have from one another instead of the similarities that we have to one another? Why do we live in a culture that tells me a story that makes me feel empty inside, like I've got a hole in me that can't be filled by sex or drugs or fame or money? Who is it that benefits from us feeling that way? Who is it that benefits from us feeling empty inside? Who tells us they can fill that hole inside us for a price? Well, there's people like this guy, isn't it? I've never trusted him. I don't like the idea of buying food from somebody whose mouth looks like a horizontal vagina. 
Now we see this information all the time, but let's take a moment to try and understand it. M, registered trademark, I'm loving it, registered trademark. How can M be a registered trademark that is one of our letters? What am I meant to do if I need a word that's got an M in it? Use a B on its side, you manipulative, bunny-grabbing, bubber fuckers. Also, I'm loving it, we hear that all the time, don't we? I'm loving it, I'm loving it, I'm loving it, I'm loving it. But what does it actually mean? What are they loving? What are they talking about? What do they mean? Well, they've dropped the G from the word loving to make it colloquial. So you think that's how we all talk to each other. Hey, I'm loving it, you're loving it too, we're loving it together. <laughs> also, by dropping the G, they can trademark it. But most importantly, by dropping the G, they distract us from the literal meaning of the verb to love in the continuous form or the act of love because I don't think McDonald's want us to have the image of Ronald McDonald in the act of love with his hard, thin, white clown cock like a veiny candle sliding into a filet of fish I'm loving it! I'm loving it! I'm loving it! I'm loving it! What are you loving, Ronald, with your fat saturated food deliberately marketed at young people. Obese schoolboys so you can waddle after them in your clown shoes and fuck them you painted paedophile. I love it, I love it, I love it. I'm not saying don't ever eat enough McDonald's or we must boycott McDonald's or bomb McDonald's. The milkshakes are fucking delicious. <laughs> Just saying. Maybe they've got a little too much power for a little too, little too little honesty. Next up, this product I quite like, Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper, unbelievably satisfying. Now that is a bold claim to make for a brown fizzy drink. Unbelievably satisfying. What would that even look like? Thank you. <laughs> Are you enjoying that beverage? I'll say I am! It's unbelievably satisfying! I'm going to have to re-quantify my understanding of satisfaction to incorporate this experience. I can't believe how satisfied I am. Me. So who's the one who's satisfied and who's the one who can't believe it? It's a fucking paradox in a can, what I'm drinking. <laughs> if we're going to use words like unbelievably satisfying to describe a brown fizzy drink, what language is left for love? What was it like when you looked into her eyes at the side of the canal, lit only by the orange street lamp, and you realised you could love again? Oh, that is unbelievably satisfying. <laughs> what language is left for God? What was it like when you realised that your consciousness is invisibly interconnected to all consciousness, that we're all one, that we can change our reality whenever we want to, just with a decision? Oh, yeah, that is unbelievably satisfying. <laughs> what was it like when you drank that Dr Pepper? It made my teeth hurt. <laughs> That is a better slogan for Dr. Pepper. It makes your teeth hurt. Or, if they want to be more honest but don't want to change it too much, they can improve it with a comma. Unbelievably, comma, given the shit we put in it. Satisfying is quite nice.